Okay, class, let's take a few moments to talk about troubleshooting our JavaScript code. Um, we've been using the HTML validator recently or the last few weeks to kind of make sure our HTML is well formed, that it's correct, that it's got everything in it that it needs. And that's been great. And it's been very valuable to get in and see those errors and know what you might have messed up on, right? Now, I want to take a moment to nip something in the bud, and that is the HTML validator is not going to help you know if your JavaScript is correct or not, if the syntax is accurate or if it's working the way that you want it to. So if you think the validator is giving you a green thumbs up, and if that makes you think your JavaScript is good too, know that that is not necessarily true. We need a different tool to look and make sure our JavaScript is happy and doing what we need it. And sometimes our JavaScript is just not working well and we don't know why, right? So we need an abil the ability to get in and look at that. Now we're going to have some assignments later on with something called the JavaScript debugger, but I wanted to introduce it to you now so that you could take a few minutes to get used to it and to familiarize yourself with it because I want to make a promise to you right now, and that is if you take the time to learn this tool, you will literally save yourself hours of pulling your hair out and banging your head against the wall when you come up against problems in your code that you can't identify. This will help you identify where those problems are exactly and give you clues to know how to solve them. So take the time to learn this tool. Um, so, and before, yeah, let's go ahead and just go right into it. Now, my setup here that you see on your screen, I've got two programs open. I've got Notepad++ on the left, and I've got uh, Chrome on the right. I have my program that I am working on saved into an HTML file called debugger.intro, and I have opened that file inside of Chrome. So that's what we see here with our input box and our hello box. This program is not doing anything interesting. I've just defined a few variables. Um, and so if I click on this, nothing is going on, at least from an outward appearance, if you're looking at the Chrome window, right? But we know because I've got some JavaScript in here and I've got this on click that's calling this JavaScript, that something is going on. It's just nothing useful that has any output to the user. So let's drill into looking at what's actually going on with this and the debugger itself. Now to get to the debugger, it's built into Chrome and it's part of a suite of tools called the developer toolkit and you get to it by right clicking anywhere inside of your Chrome window and going to this inspect uh, option here. Uh, the shortcut key is control shift I if you like control uh, keyboard shortcuts. And when you click on that, it brings up this extra pane down at the bottom of, of your uh, Chrome window with lots of different tabs, with lots of different things that you can do. And there's a lot of amazing stuff in here, but the only thing we're gonna talk about this semester is this sources tab here. Now, when you click on the sources tab, it brings up the ability to see, you know, what's what's going on with the web page. Most important part of the left here on the sources tab itself is to make sure that the file you are looking at or the file that is selected is the one that you've got open and the one you're working on. And when you do that, sometimes you may show up and there's nothing in here it's because you need to click on the actual page. And once you've clicked on the page, your code will load up and you'll know it's the right thing because it'll match what you've got inside your Notepad++. Now, once you've got it loaded, the next step is to debug with it, right? Now, in order to debug, we have to kind of think, uh, step, take a step back and talk about sequence again, right? Um, when we were working on the Robbie the Robot program, we learned about the first control structure of several we're going to learn this semester, and that is sequence, right? And that basically tells us that the default flow of execution, right, the default way that a program flows is from top to bottom. It starts on line one and moves down to the last line in the code. Now, because our code is embedded in HTML, uh, line one isn't necessarily where the debugger is going to start because the debugger is really only going to care so much about JavaScript code that it cares about. Um, and so in our case, we look in here, line 12 through 22 is really where our JavaScript runs. But notice it matches the line numbering inside of Notepad++, so that's great. Um, but the point of a debugger is it allows you to kind of pause the code and look at what's going on inside your code because you want to see what's going on and because we're making certain assumptions in our head about what it should be doing but it's not doing that and something's broken. And so I pick a point in my code that says, you know what, um, I wanna look at line 13 and pause it there and see what's going on. And in order to do that, I need to understand a breakpoint. And a breakpoint basically is a, a, a concept, right? That allows me to tell the debugger where to pause, right? And it's as simple as clicking on 
one of the line numbers that has JavaScript code and it gets highlighted in blue and it sets a breakpoint. And a breakpoint basically means now when I run my program, instead of just going all the way through, it pauses and notice it paused right on line 13. It highlights line 13 so it's very clear where we are in the program. It's also important to note at this time that it is paused before line 13 runs has run. So we haven't actually seen anything yet. Now, just to kind of explore this debugger window a little bit now that we're in the pause state, the other thing that you're really going to be interested in is this scope pane over here. And the scope basically shows us all of the variables that we have defined inside the scope of the context of the running code. In short, the scope of the function is local, right? If you've got stuff defined inside your function, it's going to be in the local scope. And that's important to remember. Now we're paused, nothing is there other than the fact that we see representations of all of the variables that I have. They're all undefined because none of those lines of code have run, so nothing has been defined yet. Um, no values have been given. And that's where we come up to this next section up here, and that is these buttons, or are, are these buttons which allow us to kind of navigate once we're in our paused mode. This one here is our most important one probably for us this semester. We may use some of these others as we get into code with multiple functions. But here, um, your basic, it basically allows you to just go from line to line to line inside your function and, and doesn't try to do much more than that. So you'll notice here as I click it, things start happening, right? And every time I click it, it moves to a new line and something changes. You'll notice that as the line gets executed, I get this neat little thing on the right that tells me what changed right and what it changed to my current um, value of the variable gets updated now notice instead of undefined these now have values and as we move through and give everything a value we are um, everything is set uh, and and really at this point the code is done. We click one more time. Well, I guess it jumps down. We've got another piece of code down here on line 28 where we're calling the function. And then we jump out and the program's done. Now, just to look at that one more time, this time I'll put some data in there. We click through and we can look at things. Now, I just want to take a real quick moment to talk about the different variable types before we end. Um, and well, we'll talk about one more concept before we end. But notice that here's another little tool, just like we've got syntax highlighting over here in our HTML, we've got color coding going on here inside of our variables to know what type of value is stored inside that variable. So not only do we have this quotation marks telling us this is a string, but it's also red, right? So everywhere we've got a string, it's red. Notice my value that I got that I put in the box got pulled in and saved into the end object and I'll tell you why I have an end object there but we've got different types of strings going on we're going to talk a little bit more about boolean later but notice boolean is a little more muted color of blue our numbers are all this kind of vibrant blue and our text is uh, is red our strings are red and that's kind of the debugger in a nutshell and the navigation of the debugger, the one other thing that you'll come across a lot is sometimes when you load your program, just you're going to get errors right from the get go, right? And if I come in here, let's kind of let's make an error. So I'm going to delete one of my quotation marks at the end of my string. I'm going to reload my program and notice immediately I get this red arrow box or this red X up here. And I can see a kind of a squiggly underline and a red X here on line 13, right? The same where my error is. Um, now your program may be big enough that you don't see this one, but you'll always see this one here. And you notice every time I click it, I get more, you know, it keeps happening because they're getting logged inside of a console window, which if I click on, comes up down here. So if I click on that, I get a console window. And it gives you an error, right, where I'm not quite sure what's going on. So when I click the button, I got an error, but this first error happened on page load, right? And we're getting two different errors going on here. The first error that came on page load, and that's the one you really want to look at. If you have errors when your page is loaded, the rest of your errors are going to be meaningless until you've got those fixed, right? But just real quick, I'll explain the, the other two errors. So it says invalid or unexpected token. You know what? It doesn't matter what that means in many ways. As you debug more and more over the years, you'll, you'll start to understand and get a clue for what types of things to look for when you see those errors. But really what's most important is the line number that you get right here, 
which gives you the ability to drill in, know exactly where the problem is, and look at it with a more scrutinizing eye to figure out what you did wrong, right? As opposed to just looking at all of your lines and saying, everything looks good, I don't know where to start. This kind of gives you a starting point. Now this other error is basically telling you that learn debugger is not defined. Learn debugger is the name of my function. Well, if your function's not defined, that usually means that your function had a problem with it and never, and if the, your, your function has an error, then it never gets defined, it doesn't complete, right? It's an incomplete function. So um, when I click on this hello button and it tries to run this, this throws an error saying, I don't know where to find this, it doesn't exist, right? So that's what that one means. Um, so we're done talking about the, the basics of a debugger. Um, and once again, I wanna reiterate that this debugger is a critical tool for you to be able to uh, debug effectively and quickly throughout the semester. So I'm highly encourage you once more to learn it. Good luck.